beneficent, the merciful. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad to whom all praise is due forever. I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is his Christ, Messiah, and last messenger to us all. I further bear witness that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is our divine reminder, teacher, guide, warner, and comforter in this dark hour. I greet all of you watching. With the greeting words of peace, we say in our Arabic language of Assalamu Alaikum. In this video, I wanted to talk about opposition and struggle and difficulties. And I felt like I needed to talk about this because it is something that we all face. It is something that we all go through and it is something that we have all experienced. And so I believe it is something that is not talked about openly very much. So I've definitely been through my share of opposition and struggle and difficulty. And I'm going to try to make this video short. Um, but yeah, I pray Allah allows me to get, get everything in that, that, that needs to be said. So what is opposition? What is opposition? What does it mean to oppose something or someone? So opposition is... Opposition, resistance that is expressed in action or argument, dislike, disapproval, compete against, criticize. The action of resisting or combating, antagonism or hostility, the state or position of being placed opposite, set against, opposition. Opposition is resistance that is expressed through actions or through argument. It is disapproval, criticism. It means to be against, to disagree with, to compete against. So what happens in our lives when we are opposed, when we do something, or when we say something? What do we do? I'd like to go into the study guides which is what I have been talking about um, in my Will of God Part 1 video and my Will of God Part 2 video. But I wanted to go back into the study guide to talk about opposition. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us in the study guides that our life begins with opposition. It begins before we're even conceived. And then he goes into talking about the sperm. And when the sperm is trying to reach the ovum, there's millions and millions of sperm trying to get to the ovum. But only one of them makes it and all the rest die. That was a competition. That was a race. <laughs> so we come into this life with struggle. We come into this life to struggle. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the study guides, he mentions the prophets. And in mentioning the prophets, he's talking about how all the prophets of God and all the men of God, they experienced opposition. Their entire calling was opposition from their own people. I'm not saying from the whole world. I'm saying their opposition was from their own people. Because when Allah, God, sent prophets to represent himself, he sent them with a message of righteousness, of truth, of goodness. He sent them with a message to tell the people that you should worship no other God 
but he, the one who sent me, that was the message of all the prophets. All of the prophets sent that same message. And all of them received opposition. All of them received ridicule. All of them received uh, disapproval. All of them received this. All of them went through struggle. All of them went through difficulties. All of them even had fear. Some of the prophets even trembled at, at Allah's calling of them. They were scared. They trembled. However, the prophets of God, even through their fear, even through their opposition, even through the majority of the people not liking them, the prophets were victorious. And the only reason why they were victorious against their enemy and against their people was because they had faith in Allah, God. They trusted in Allah, God. And they sought refuge and they sought assistance from Allah, God. As long as you're striving to do the will of God and as long as you're striving to do the work of Allah, God, and as long as you're striving to be the truth and to share the truth, Allah will make you victorious no matter what opposition comes your way. Uh, but you have to stand on it though. You have to stand on it. You have to stand on what you say you believe in. You have to stand on what you say. And you have to be able to back it up with truth. So whatever opposition comes your way, for whatever reason, maybe it's a decision you made. Maybe you decided to quit your job and start your own business. Maybe you decided, I, I don't know, it, it could be anything. Maybe you decided to get married and your family and your friends oppose. Maybe you decided, I don't know, whatever the case may be, you have to stand on that decision. You cannot let somebody dictate to you your life. You can't allow somebody, anyone, to make decisions for you in your life. So yes, we have free will. Yes, Allah, God, gave us free will. That's the only thing that makes, that is, that's the only distinction from us and an animal is that Allah, God, gave us free will. Animals, you know, the animals that Allah created, they have no choice. They don't have free will. A dog has to bark. A cat has to meow. A cow has to moo. Birds have to fly. They can't say, you know what, I think I'm gonna, you know, I think I'm just gonna not fly and just walk the rest of my life. Cows don't run fast. Cows don't say, you know what, I think I'm just gonna start running like a cheetah. <laughs> animals don't have free will humans have free will however that doesn't mean that all you, all of your decisions are in line with Allah's will see that's one of the things that's one of the things that I realize that people do is they say you know well Allah God you know Allah God he you know or God gave us free will we have free will so you know we could do whatever we want and then we call ourselves Muslims, we call ourselves Christians, and we call ourselves, you know, these religified names, but then we go and drink, and then we smoke, and then we go and fornicate and start acting like the devil. But then we say, oh, Allah knows my heart. Jesus knows my heart. God knows my heart. Allah, God doesn't work that way. He, give, he, he gives us free will. Yes. But there is one will. There is one will. And that's Allah's way. That's Allah's will. So yeah, you can have free will, which normally goes the other way, or you can choose to strive to do Allah's will. And this is what this world is. In the Bible it says, it says no man can serve two masters. So you can't be going this way and this way at the same time. I mean, you can't. You have to go one way 
or the other. So, yeah, back to opposition. You know, when you have opposition in your life, you have to stand up like a man. You have to stand up like a woman. You cannot be a coward when it comes to standing up for yourself, when it comes to the truth. And the truth can be hard to bear sometimes. It can be hard to hear for people who are in this world so used to lies. You know, this world is, you know, we're used to lies. We're used to falsehood. So when you're speaking the truth and you're trying to wake people up with the truth, it's going to sting. It's going to sting. It's going to hurt. And people are going to rise up against you real quick. Real quick. But you can't be that person to be like, okay, okay, you know, you're right, you're right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. Let me just shut up. Let me just shut up. I don't think so. A lot of God don't like no cowards. You can't be a coward if you're trying to share the truth. So in Building the Will, Part 1, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says, Allah God has ordained struggle. Ordained to order or decree something officially, to confer holy orders on, to command, enjoin, establish, or dictate. Ordained. He says, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, you cannot be a champion without an opponent. That is, we can think we are determined, but how determined we are cannot be determined until opposition comes. I'll say that one more time. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, you cannot be a champion without an opponent. That is, we all can think that we are determined, but how determined we are cannot be determined until opposition comes. You cannot be a champion without an opponent. That is, we can think we are determined, but how determined we are cannot be determined until opposition comes. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the leader of the Nation of Islam. See, opposition when it comes, it's either going to make you or it's going to break you. It's either going to make you stand up and build you even stronger or it's going to break you down. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan also said in Building the Will that in order to build your will, he says, yes, desire, you need desire. Desire feeds your will. So if you want to bring something into existence, you have to have desire to feed your will. But along with that desire in building your will, you're going to come up against opposition. And you have to overcome that opposition because that opposition is going to build you. It's going to make you stronger. Mm. Powerful. Alhamdulillah. All praise is due to Allah. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in Building the Will says, Opposition is vital. He says, without opposition, how are we going to know who we are? How are we going to know if we're true or if we're just talking the talk? Yeah, opposition is definitely going to call you out. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says, There was opposition to Noah by the disbelievers, the chiefs of the people. They mocked him and caused the people to mock him. But the mockery strengthened his will because will, like a muscle, is developed by exercise. And as we exercise muscles by lifting weights, we exercise our will by overcoming resistance. Mm. If we don't meet resistance, we cannot develop our will. 
So, yes, Noah, for instance, Allah, God, told Noah to build an ark. That's what Allah, God, told Noah. Noah believed what Allah told him. Noah had trust in what Allah told him. Noah did not doubt what Allah, God, told him. And Noah submitted to what Allah told him. And Noah went to work. Noah went to work and all the people who were with him went to work on building the ark. The majority of the people of Noah stood around, watched, mocked, which when you mock somebody, you're, you're making fun of them, which a, a lot of our people do to us. You stand around, you talk about them, you, you laugh at them, you say evil, vicious things about them, you, you stand around and you, you just, you're evil towards them. That's what the majority, that's what's happening exactly today. You see, the Bible is 75% prophecy. That means prophecy means something that's going to happen in the future. The future is now. The future is, is right now. Most of us think of Jesus in the Bible as, as something that was like way back then. Way, way back then. No. No, we understand it incorrectly. Many of the prophecies of the, of the Bible are happening right now. We are living in the times that the prophets wanted to live in. So, yeah, as the people stood around and, you know, the disbelievers of Noah's people stood around laughing and joking and, you know, sinning, you know what I'm saying, do whatever they wanted to do, being Satan, a lot of God killed them. I'll say that again because I know that probably stung some people's ears and, you know, probably scratched them a little bit. While all the disbelievers of Noah stood around laughing and making jokes and talking about Noah and his people, Allah God killed them. Allah God doesn't love everybody. Stop saying that God loves everybody because he doesn't. And that's what Allah God did not only to the people of Noah, but the people who didn't heed the message of Lot, Allah killed them. Allah killed all of the people who disregarded his servants' messages. I didn't say it. It's in the Bible. You can read it for yourself. <laughs> you could read it for yourself. So... The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the study guides, he says that Allah God created man to face difficulties. He says, Allah God brought us all onto this earth to face one difficulty after another. And it is the facing of these difficulties and the overcoming of these difficulties that helps us to improve our character and helps us to improve ourselves. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan goes on to say, to look the key word in struggle and difficulty and opposition is to face a difficulty. To face a difficulty. To face a difficulty means to look at it assess it to summon the total strength of our being to oppose it to overcome it to have a determined persevering and courageous spirit to overcome the difficulty he says there is no difficulty man is faced with that man does not have the ability to overcome if he will summon the strength of his being against that obstacle in the pathway of his progress. Summon, gather up, call on, to bring to mind or remember, 
to cause one to think of something, to bring into existence or readiness, summon. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is saying, you can overcome any difficulty, opposition, or struggle that is in your life. You were built, you were created to overcome it. That's very powerful. And I have to think about this all the time. You know, I was born a fighter from birth. I was born, I was created for this. I was born to fight. And whatever is in your life, we're talking about opposition, struggle, and difficulty right now. Whatever is in your life, maybe it's a bad relationship. Maybe you're sick and tired of your weight, your, your size. Maybe you're tired of working for the white man. And you want to build your own business, create your own business. Maybe, maybe the doctors gave you a diagnosis. And they're telling you all this stuff. And you're afraid. These types of struggles we go through. These types of difficulties we go through. These types of... These types of issues we go through all the time. But you can overcome it. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has told us we're God. God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, has placed a part of himself in you. So if he's placed a part of himself in you, then he's placed a part of his power in you. And Minister Farrakhan is saying, if you summon the total strength of your being, you can overcome anything. Anything. You can overcome anything. I don't care if you're a brother or a sister who, I don't know, let's say, drinks. Drinks all night long, smokes weed all night long, cigarettes, you know, belly hanging over your pants, house is a mess, no job, no education, five children running around, food stamps, and this is and this is a daily basis. This is this is what your life is on a regular basis. The words that come out of your mouth are vulgar. Maybe you're loud and belligerent. Um, you are a man or woman of God. You have the essence of God in your material makeup. So your current situation has no bearing on what God has placed inside of you. If you summoned the total strength of your being, you could have a complete 360 degree change in your life in three months or less, if you chose to. If you chose to. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan goes on to say about difficulty and struggle. He says, how many of you, when a difficult situation arises in your life, summon the strength of your being to stand resolutely and firmly in the face of that difficulty to overcome it? Or do you turn away? He says, brothers and sisters, each time we turn away from the struggle to overcome difficulty, there is then a deterioration in our character. And there is a destruction of the will. The will that is within you 
is God's gift. It is his essence that he gives to man and anything that deteriorates your will destroys your ability to cope with problems of life. Struggle is ordained. Struggle is ordained by God. But Allah God is not a vicious God. He is not a mean God. He is a loving God, a beneficent God, a merciful God, a forgiving God. But he ordains struggle. Because without struggle, you cannot bring out of yourself that which Allah God has deposited within you. Mm. Struggle is ordained, but Allah God says, after difficulty comes ease. After difficulty comes ease. Allah God gives us struggle. He gives us difficulty. He gives us opposition. And then he gives us ease. And then he gives us another obstacle, another situation, another struggle, another difficulty to overcome. And then he gives us ease. It's like a flow. It's a balance. There's no way anybody has ease all the time. It's very powerful. I believe that struggle and, and opposition and difficulty is it's one of the main things that keeps people that holds people back. It's one of the main things that holds people back, back from growth, back from accomplishing their dreams, back from even thinking about doing or being you know something wonderful or doing something wonderful um, because it takes a lot of mental strength to overcome difficulty it takes a lot of mental strength to to overcome opposition and like I said with the prophets opposition and difficulty and struggle sometimes it won't only cause you to be fearful but it'll make you tremble like it'll make you shake like Oh God, you know, oh Allah. <laughs> oh Allah, what do I do? Oh Allah, but you gotta face it. it. It doesn't matter that you feel fearful. It doesn't matter that you're fearful. It doesn't matter that you tremble. You better stand up to that opposition like this. You better not back down. You know, that's the thing. Move forward in faith. You can still be fearful. You can still tremble. And you can still... Be trusting Allah God. You can still go out on the battlefield with fear and you know this this trembling, but but going forth, knowing that Allah God is with you. So whew, it's a trip, man. Opposition is a trip. Struggle, difficulty. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that everything of value has a difficulty factor attached to it. The greater the value, the greater the difficulty. Everything of value has a difficulty factor attached to it. The greater the value, the greater the difficulty. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the National Representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam. such as marriage. Marriage is so extremely valuable and wonderful and beautiful in the sight of Allah. But you gonna struggle. I've never been married but I've seen other marriages and I hear stories and you know we talk about marriage openly. It's a struggle. So, anyways, beloveds, I just wanted to talk about opposition and struggle and difficulty because we are going to have to go through it. 
We're going to have to go through it with each other. We're going to have to go through it in this mission. We're we're going to have we're going to go through it uniting. Us uniting is going to be a process. It's not going to be like an overnight thing. Like yeah, we're, we're all of us are united within 24 hours. It's not going to happen like that. There's going to be struggle in us uniting. There's going to be struggle in us completely separating ourselves from the Caucasian world. There's going to be struggle and opposition in us getting our own territory and our own states. There's going to be opposition and struggle the whole way there until we're completely separated from this world. So gird up your loins, guard yourself. And in all of your struggles and all of your difficulties and all of your oppositions, above all, seek refuge in Allah. Seek refuge in Allah. Know that he heard you and know that he will answer you. Because that's what the prophets did. The prophets of God in all of their struggles and their difficulties, they sought refuge in Allah. And that's how they became victorious. So I'm going to leave it there. I greet you in the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum.